in the Greenville Convention Center in the Digital Lounge with um, Dr. Megan Doyle, who's the Craven County Schools District Superintendent. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple of questions for her. Um, in your session, you talked about the relationship between Centenary United Methodist mm -hmm. Church and Oaks Road Elementary. Can you give us a brief summary of uh, the relationship between those two organizations and how that flourished? Um, I think there's a lot of things that made uh -huh. that relationship flourish. Uh, as I mentioned in my session this year, we just ended. Um, the person who kind of spearheads it for Centenary, which is uh, Gail Midget, plopped a piece of paper on my desk uh, just the other day that they had given over 5,000 hours of service to wow. the school, which is the equivalent of about five people a day for the full day. Um, and that says a lot about that church and their commitment. I really think that it is, there's two things that make it, make it work. Uh, the first thing is obviously the commitment of the church and those volunteers. Mm -hmm. The great part about Gail and what she's built with Centenary and, and all of her volunteers is she started small. And, and her goal is, and she says this to me all the time, that she's going to grow it a little bit at a time. Well, from last year to this uh, most recent year, uh, she grew it four times fold. Wow. So um, it's, it's really doing what you said you were going to do and following through on the commitment. But then I think there's also sometimes a barrier in schools that the principal is not sure about what this is going to mean or, you know, if there's going to be, you know, kind of crossing the line with some of the things that we have to comply with in terms of um, making sure that we're not proselytizing to students in school and that kind of thing, which that's never been an issue for us. Um, it's, it's really just living out um, Jesus' love in our schools. And so uh, we never have to worry about that. It's really the principal part of it is figuring out how to build that relationship with that principal. I was telling my folks in the session that the best thing to do is to start just doing small things and be consistent about coming mm -hmm. and providing a small service every once in a while. And once you do that, you start creating relationships with other folks in the building, start figuring out what they need, and then you can start providing it. Uh, to the extent that you're able. Uh, you don't have to do anything that's not working for you or won't work for you, but I encouraged my folks that were in the session, do what you love. You know, if you mm -hmm. love to garden, then help with something outside and doing some beautification. I even said, if you like to do Excel spreadsheets, I promise you the principal can put you to work doing spreadsheets, looking at student data, as long as you man ma maintain confidentiality. Um, if you love to read to children, we can make sure you do that all day long. Um, but if you want to work and do an organizing, organizing a storeroom, that kind of thing, you can do what you love in our schools and we will gladly welcome you. It's just first building that relationship. So building connections and collaborations. Absolutely. Yeah, and good communications, it sounds mm -hmm. like that's really Absolutely. important too. It's tough for a principal because, you know, they, they have a lot of people pulling on them. So once you prove to the principal that you can be an asset, then it's a whole lot easier to kind of build that uh, relationship and make it even more stronger day after day. Okay. Well, how can we inspire um, more creative partnerships between schools and churches? I think the, um, it really kind of goes back to what I was just saying. Um, there's lots of opportunities in a school building to provide service. Um, and I think not forcing anyone to do anything they don't want to do. Um, when you are, many of the volunteers that we have from Centenary or from Garber United Methodist or from Cherry Point Methodist, all of those folks are doing something that they really like in our school buildings. Uh, we, I was telling uh, one of the folks outside that um, we had a group of women at um, uh, Cherry Point Methodist that were that knitted scarves for all of our bus drivers during Bus Driver Appreciation mm -hmm. Month. These were folks who I think were ambulatory. They couldn't leave their home or they couldn't really get out very well uh, and, and move around a lot, but they knitted scarves for all of our bus drivers. And if you would have seen the look on our bus driver's face about what that just small gift meant to them. I mean, these are folks that get up at four o'clock in the morning, crank buses when it's you know the coldest day of you know the year to get buses warm for children every day, and they're they're cold too. Yeah. So that's just a little act of service that someone loves to knit or crochet, and they provided that service you know and that that beautiful gift to our bus drivers. I think being creative really is just again going back to building relationships. And once you are in a building, you can't help but figure out what you can do to help and assist. And the key is just, um, you know, providing that, that um, service, those hours, that time, lovingly. Okay. From a school standpoint, is there a difference between collaborations with faith groups and other groups or nonprofits? I really don't think there's a real significant difference. I do think, uh, I've talked, one of my board members is very, very committed to this ministry. And so um, that's helped me, that's helped bring me along and educated me about uh, the potential and the power that this has in our schools. 
Um, I think a lot of it is um, awareness and knowledge and educating people about what the, um, the opportunities are. Uh, and so I think sometimes, especially for educators, we're those kind of folks that we have to see it before we believe it. And so um, I think that's the, the first thing is to really communicate about what is happening that's successful in other schools. And we're also a very competitive lot. So once, you know, the Pitt County superintendent knows that it's happening in Craven County or the Martin County superintendent knows that it's happening in Pasquotank, you know, they're going to talk. We all talk and, uh, and we want to have those very same opportunities for our students. I think the unique part is always, again, making sure that um, we all stay in our lane. That's mm -hmm. how I like to kind of say it. Um, but again, as long as there's really good communication about what um, what we can do and what we can what we can't do or what we can't accommodate, then I really do believe there's no limit. Uh, and so being creative is just uh, as as far as the mind or the bodies that we have coming into our school, the skills that they have to bring to our children. Well, since you're an educator, I figured you could handle a creative question. Okay. So let's say you're given an elephant and you cannot sell it or give it away. Mm -hmm. What would you do with that elephant? I'm going to ride that elephant. <laughs> so um, I'm going to take that elephant, and, and as an educator, as a superintendent, I'm going to take that elephant to my schools. I'm going to let my kids learn about uh, science. I was a science teacher, mm -hmm. so that's a great opportunity for me. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to ride the elephant. <laughs> I might have a problem with the caretaking of the elephant. Um, I'm not good with plants. Um, I'm just as bad with my own dogs. My husband helps me with them, but um, I will find a way and I'll make sure I take care of that elephant and, Great and ride him. <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. I'd join you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Right. I appreciate being here. Yeah. appreciate being a part of your conference. Thank you.